Hey everyone, I'm Matt, a developer from Ohio. In this video, I'll give you some tips for working on a software development team. You might be learning to program and just about to start on your first team project. You could be a newly hired developer at a software firm or a seasoned developer looking to make your team more efficient. As developers, we're often better at writing code and fixing bugs than we are at working together. I hear programmers say, I can do it faster on my own or my team would just slow me down. And I get it. It can be tough to let others take some control, especially if you're used to a more independent workflow. But here's the thing. An effective team is more than the sum of its parts, and it's absolutely necessary in real-world development. Consider these scenarios. The project is simply too large for one developer to reasonably do on their own. The project covers a lot of different, specific technologies, and any one developer isn't likely to be an expert in all of them. The project has a deadline, so some parts need to be worked on simultaneously. These are all realities of most product development, which means that you'll need to deal with them if you work as a developer or ever want to. There's plenty of things that your boss or manager can do to optimize your team's work, but how can you be the most effective collaborator? Over the rest of this video, I'll break down my tips for how to communicate effectively, keep momentum, and actually work together. We'll start with communication. Do you ever come across a piece of code that's just impossible to read? Well, every piece of code was written by someone, so you should try your best to avoid being that person. Make your code easy to understand. Other developers on your team should be able to grok the purpose of a class, function, or file almost immediately. If they're walking around the office asking who wrote this and why, then your work isn't easy to understand. Follow your team's guidelines. A lot of companies and open source projects have style guides, which provide conventions for function naming, code formatting, comment styles, and so on. Following conventions makes your work easier to parse. If your team doesn't have a style guide, you should always try to match the existing code as much as possible. Writing code is not the time to voice your opinion about tabs versus spaces. Make your files easy to find by filing them away neatly. If every script file ends up in one big source folder, nobody will be able to find anything. In my experience, this leads to a lot of overlapping functionality. Developers will add necessary features if they can't find them, because lost code is as good as no code. If your team's project directory is a mess, consider having a talk with everyone about how to best sort it out. The best way to make your work understood is to simply name your files, functions, and variables well. This is most of what people mean when they say self-documenting code. Always write descriptive names. In modern development, with less file size restrictions and more IDE autocomplete features, there's never a reason to use shortened or abbreviated names. If you ever find that a name isn't enough, add a comment. Don't ever leave it up to future developers to guess. Speaking of descriptive names and comments, remember that most communication between developers is documentation. A well-documented codebase keeps all the developers on the same page, makes it easier to read and work on legacy code, lets developers collaborate without going through the original author, and helps track and resolve issues. Unfortunately, documentation also takes a lot of time, especially if you have to go back and do it later, feels like it takes time away from working on new features, and isn't really part of the same skill set that makes you a great programmer. But the truth is that it's not that hard, and it's important to keeping a healthy, maintainable code base. The best thing you can do is mix it into your existing workflow. Documenting is hard when you have to go back and add it, but it can become part of every step. Write some new code, document it right away. Commit and push, that's documentation on its own. And I'm not talking about closing your IDE and adding some paragraphs to the company wiki. Just use thoughtful names, leave descriptive comments, write good commit messages, that sort of thing. You're already writing code and committing your work. It doesn't actually need to take any longer than it already takes. Adjacent to code documentation is work documentation. Earlier I said that lost code is as good as no code. Well, the same goes for duplicate code. If everyone on the team knows who is working on what, Duplicate code won't happen. I'm not talking about Scrum or Kanban or any of the other popular task management methodologies. As a manager myself, I've tried all of them. Methodologies are like diets. You can follow a specific set of rules, but it really comes down to just eating no more than you need. All you really need to do to avoid work overlap is to let everyone know your current task. Let the team know when you start and when you finish. You can use sticky notes in the office, send a group message, or just stand up and announce it. Larger teams might consider more elaborate tools, but they serve the same purpose. That about does it for effective communication. Remember to make your work understood, 
write documentation as soon as possible, and make sure that everyone knows what you're working on. Next, we'll take a look at how to keep momentum. My last tip was let everyone know your current task, but how do you pick tasks? On some teams, you might have specific tasks assigned to you. On others, you might claim tasks on a week-by-week -week basis, or just grab a new one when you finish the last. However you work, try to make sure that you're focusing on the right task at the right time. That is, prioritize your tasks. It's important to keep a prioritized backlog, which is a list of all the upcoming tasks, ordered by which are the most integral to the project. In modern, agile development, the product design can change in reaction to ongoing development. That's why it's important to get the big tasks settled as soon as possible. The lower priority tasks can wait or even be abandoned in some cases. This is the one tip on here that I personally struggle with a lot. When I look at the backlog, I often find a more appealing task than the one with the highest priority. Maybe that top priority is difficult or uninteresting. If you find yourself wanting to go after an interesting but lower priority task, see if you can put your name on it and save it for later. Sometimes a high priority task stays undone for a long time. Maybe no developer has claimed it, or one developer is having difficulty with it. This isn't an excuse to ignore that task and move on to another. Your team is most effective when everyone can work together on the project as a whole. Consider the swarm and destroy tactic as opposed to the divide and conquer tactic. In divide and conquer, everyone works on their own tasks. If they get stuck, those tasks won't get done on time. In swarm and destroy, everyone teams up on the tough tasks and blows them away. What I'm talking about is limiting work in progress. Remember that your team is more than the sum of its parts. By ganging up on progress blocking tasks, your team can move forward without ever stopping to wait. Knowing when to swarm is important too. The reality is that some tasks are going to be easier than others, and it's impossible to perfectly anticipate the complexity of every task. This is where stand-ups come in. A stand-up is just a quick daily meeting with everyone on the team. Going around the room, everyone says whether or not they're stuck on anything. If someone is stuck, that's when you should swarm. Of course, whether or not you do full-fledged stand-ups is down to your team's workflow. As long as you touch base with your team as often as possible, you should be good. For example, I work from home, and there's no time that every one of my developers is free every day. Instead of having stand-ups, we have a channel in our chat room for people to post daily status updates. So my tips for keeping momentum are prioritize tasks, limit work in progress, and do stand-ups, at least in some form. My last few tips are for actually working together. I say actually because there's a big difference between a bunch of developers working toward one goal and a finely tuned team working as a unit. There's one key difference between working towards the same goal and working as a cohesive unit. Mutual accountability. It's human nature to serve our own best interests, so that's what we do. I've seen it plenty of times. One developer is stuck on something and everyone else keeps to their own tasks because that's not their problem. I've even seen someone deliberately avoid helping his coworkers because he thought it made him look better in comparison. That logic is flawed because teams sink or swim together. It's in your own best interest to keep a team-oriented mentality, because it is your problem if the team's product ships with a critical bug or ends up months behind schedule. Think about your favorite team sport. No matter how good the star player looks, the whole team either wins or loses. Besides, isn't it only decent to help each other out? When you're working collaboratively toward that finished project, it's likely that you'll end up with conflicting ideas about creative direction or the validity of a particular solution. This is why we have team leaders. When everyone follows the team's lead, there's never more than one question's worth of hangups. If you disagree or are unsure about something, the lead developer, manager, or other leader will make the call. If your team doesn't have a leader, I'd recommend that you establish one developer as the lead developer. Having someone to arbitrate even minor conflicts will save a ton of time in the long run. Of course, I'm not recommending that you sit idly by if you disagree with the lead developer. You can and should talk to your team's leader if you want to make a change to the product or the workflow. If you go against the grain without approval, though, you'll just end up confusing everyone and slowing down the process. Most of my tips so far have been about work habits, but how can you increase the quality of your team's actual code? In my opinion, the best way to increase code quality is to simply review each other's code. Here's the idea. Whenever anyone on the team commits code, a reviewer has to approve the changes and merge them into the project. This keeps everything up to the team's standards, allows for systematic testing, and keeps developers accountable for their work. Your team may have a formalized process for code review, and that's great. I definitely advocate for mandatory code review. 
If your team doesn't do reviews, ask your teammates to double check your work after committing big changes. If that's not enough, another way to ensure code quality is pair programming. Pair programming is just what it sounds like, two developers at one keyboard. One of you will write code while the other plays Navigator, spotting errors, thinking one step ahead, and searching for solutions to any problems you run into. A lot of newer developers see this as a waste of manpower, but it's great for producing more stable code. You'll probably make up for lost time by not having to go fix a lot of bugs. Plus, pair programming can be a lot less isolating than burying yourself in the zone. Pair programming is easy to get running without major changes to your team's process because you can simply ask one of your teammates to help you out for a bit. I wouldn't recommend pairing on every task. Just use it when you need it, and encourage your teammates to do the same. If everyone is open to effective collaboration, the work will go by faster and easier. To recap, my tips for actually working together are think as a team, follow your leader, do code review, and try pair programming. And those are my 10 tips for working on a dev team. Here they are one more time. Make your code easy to understand. Follow a style guide and use descriptive names. Mix in your documentation by doing it every step along the way. Let everyone know your current task, so that nobody ends up doing duplicate work. Prioritize your tasks and bookmark the more interesting ones for later. Touch base as often as possible so you know when to swarm. Limit work in progress by swarming on unexpectedly difficult tasks. Keep a team-oriented mentality. Remember that you all sink or swim together. Follow the team's lead. You'll end up confusing the team if you don't. If you want to make a change, ask your lead about it. Review each other's code to increase code quality. And try pair programming to make more stable code and have more fun at work. Hey, thanks for watching. You can join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, you can start learning at Codecademy today.